my name is Lisa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I go by Queen Bee Creations. I do online classes here every Monday for free. Uh, I provide you the links if you decide you want to make one of the cards that we're doing. You can buy all the supplies through my online store. Today we're going to be working on a spinner card. And so what that means is that this piece in the middle here spins. And the idea is that you could wind it up before you close the card. And then when you open it, it spins. So it just adds a little bit of extra something. And so today I'm gonna to show you how we do that. Okay, so here we are, here we're down on my desk. And this is just a standard card base, eight and a half by 11 was cut in half and then scored in half. And so this is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. We're gonna go ahead and fold that on the score line and burnish with a bone folder. And then I've got some layers that are gonna go on top of it. So I've got four inches by five and a quarter. And then I've got another piece that's three and three quarter by five and that's of the designer series paper. Then I've got one on the inside, again, four inches by five and a quarter. And then I have some scraps because we're gonna be working with the so many snowflakes and the snowflake wishes. And so this is our stamp set and here are the coordinating dies that go with it. It's kind of a large set. And so we're going to be cutting out some snowflakes in various colors. So I have my little scrap pieces out. Those of you that have been watching me for a while know that I use these little Pendaflex folders to store all my scraps in. And then I've got our die cutting machine out. I had to use the bigger one because we're going to cut a hole with the large circle out of this one. So we needed the bigger one. And here we go. Here's our layering circles dies because this is what's going to cut the hole in the front. So this is the size that I used. It's the largest one. And we're going to go ahead and assemble it first and then I'm going to cut it out because I want it to cut through all three layers. So I'm putting it all over this layer. And then I'm just going to set it on top of this one and not quite glue it yet because our string is going to run between the two layers. Um, the colors I'm using are Snowflake Splendor is the DSP. This is Pacific Point and this is Highland Heather. Oh, and then let's cut some snowflakes. And I just used varying colors and shapes and then just stacked them on top of each other. So here's how our snowflakes are going to line up. I'm just going to offset them and then offset colors. So we're going to stack those up like that. And then I need one more for the back because we're going to sandwich some thread between them. Now we can bring in these snowflakes that we cut. And there's two of this one, which is in the back. I'll show you why in a minute. And then I'm going to use some jewelry filament and you can also use invisible thread. You can use fishing line. Um, if you're going to use the jewelry stuff, you have to make sure that it's not the stretchy kind. If it's the stretchy, it's not going to work. So we need something that's going to stay solid. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the back of this snowflake. So let's put some glue dots here. I think these colors go really pretty together. And I found them by looking at the back of my designer series paper, and that's what they had used. And I'm going to put a, just a little tiny bit of glue dot up at the point to make sure that it stays in the center. I just cut a glue dot in half. You could probably use liquid glue if you had a little more time. But then, like I said, I'm just making sure it goes all the way up the point. And then this is going to go on the back. And see, that's what's going to hide our filament or fishing line or thread or whatever you're going to be using. 
And then I'm just going to stack these others as I would normally. And then I'm just going to come in with some rhinestones. Place one in the center. And then I'm going to take my tear and tape and I'm going to place this on my card front and center it in the hole that I cut with my circle. And then I'm going to tape it down and I'm giving it a really good push with my fingernails to make sure that it's good and stuck and I'm pulling it taut. Okay, so then I'm going to come in with my snips and I'm just going to snip off the excess. Probably come a little closer with this one because we want to leave room for our border that's going to be on the outside edge. And then I'm going to bring this back in. Now we're ready to stick it to the front. And so I'm going to do that again with the liquid glue so I make sure I get it all the way around the circle. And then just line it up so it matches. And now we have our spinner. Then we're ready to do the inside of the card. You all know I never leave a card unfinished on the inside. So I've got my Whisper White, and I'm going to bring in Snowflake Wishes. Let's say Snowflake Wishes for a Merry Christmas. Line that up on my grid paper. And then I want some little snowflakes in the corners, and so I'm just going to grab this little snow flurry and some Seaside Spray ink. And there we go. Then we're almost done. I'm going to finish off the front with a few more rhinestones. Hopefully you've heard me say it before, but if your stuff out of the end of this oozes too much, it means you have the thing screwed down too tight. You want to screw it down until you get some of the putty to come out, and then you're going to back it off a little bit because it's the pressure that makes it ooze out. So if you're getting too much, just back it up a little. But I love this thing. It works great. And I'm just adding rhinestones in the center of some snowflakes. And there we go. We're all done. There's our spinner card. And so you can see I did this one with the Pacific Point Highland Heather Purple Posy and Seaside Spray. This one, it's kind of got a lighter look to it because it's just Purple Posy and Seaside Spray. So it all just depends on how bold you want to be with your colors. It looks like I've used some different snowflakes too. But what do you think? You're going to give it a try? Okay, so we're back on up here. <laughs> so here's the card we made today. I hope you enjoyed this process. When I'm done with this video, I will go ahead and post a list of supplies used in the making of this card on the video. And you can pop on over to my store and get anything that you're in need of. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you had a good time. Thanks. Bye.